This video is about calorimetry. By the end of this video, you should understand what calorimetry is and be able to calculate the enthalpy change of a reaction using calorimetry data. Calorimetry is one of four methods we'll look at in this class to determine the delta H of a reaction or the enthalpy change of a reaction. The definition of calorimetry is simply the science of measuring heat. In this class, we'll be looking at constant pressure calorimetry. Constant pressure calorimetry is calorimetry done at atmospheric pressure, which remains relatively constant throughout the course of the experiment. In order to perform a calorimetry experiment, we start with a calorimeter. A calorimeter should be something that minimizes heat loss to the surrounding. We want to be able to measure the energy change of the system as accurately as possible. The most commonly used calorimeter is just two styrofoam cups stacked one inside the other with a cork stopper. A thermometer is placed into the styrofoam cups. Then, the reaction that we're interested in can be run inside the styrofoam cups and the temperature change of the reaction can be measured. Constant pressure calorimetry is conducted when we run a reaction that occurs in solution. For this reason, we will always be measuring the temperature change of the water. In order to calculate energy change of the system, we'll use the specific heat equation. Here, M is mass of the solution, C is specific heat, and, T, delta, and delta T is temperature. Note that an aqueous solution is almost entirely water. Therefore, the specific heat of the solution will be the same as the specific heat of water. Let's look at an example. Here, we've combined 50 milliliters of aqueous hydrochloric acid with 50 milliliters of aqueous sodium hydroxide. When this reaction occurs, the temperature of the combined solutions changes from 25 degrees Celsius to 31.9 degrees Celsius, and we're asked to calculate the enthalpy of this reaction. First, let's consider the values for each of the variables in our equation. Since we've combined 50 milliliters of HCl and 50 milliliters of NaOH, our resulting solution will be 100 milliliters. Since the density of water is 1 gram per milliliter, this means we're dealing with a mass of 100 grams. Our specific heat is that of liquid water, since this reaction is occurring in aqueous solution, and our temperature change is 6.9 degrees Celsius. Plugging this into our equation, we get an energy change of 2,900 joules. Now, in order to call this a delta H, it needs a sign, so we need to consider whether or not this reaction gained energy or released energy. Recall that we are measuring the temperature of the water that the reactants are reacting in. Since the temperature of the water went up, that means that the reaction released energy from the reactants to the water. Therefore, this is an exothermic reaction, and our delta H will have a negative sign. Here's another example to try on your own. Pause the video here and give this one a try. It's a little bit tricky, so when you come back, I'll reveal the answer. Welcome back. First, in this problem, we needed to determine the energy change associated with the dissolving process. Again, we're measuring the temperature of only the water. Therefore, in this case, only the water is the mass that we're interested in. Our specific heat is, again, that of water. And our temperature change is 9.4 degrees, giving us a Q value of 2,950 joules. However, this energy value is associated with 12.8 grams of KCl. We want, to know what the, we want to know what the delta H would be for an entire mole of KCl. Over here, I've used a proportion to determine the delta H for one mole of KCl, and then convert it to kilojoules per mole, as the question, as the question asked us to. That brings us to the end of this video. Let's review our goals. First, we looked at what calorimetry is, and then we looked at how the enthalpy change of a reaction can be calculated using calorimetry data. 